What you're looking at is a whole bunch of in-channel MOSFETs, several tubes of them, plus a bag full of IRF 730 MOSFETs that had their leads bent and cut to be inserted by a machine into a circuit board. The question was, what are the actual specs on all of these MOSFETs? Plus this collection down here at the bottom are some of my own that I already had and includes also some IGBTs that I'll run the test on as well. What I'm testing here is I want to see the gate voltage versus the drain current and how much resistance I have from source to drain. And this will give you, an, and, this, and the findings were fairly interesting. It taught me some things that I didn't actually know. So let's get started. This is one of the, up here by the way, is one of these um, semiconductor testers. I also pre-tested the MOSFET before I actually put it under load. And I did, a, I did five of each MOSFET for the test. And then I largely averaged the results. And this meter told me what the turn on voltage was. And when I put it in the real world, when I tested it actually under load, I found out that this leaves something to be desired. It will tell you that it's an N or P channel MOSFET most of the time. Uh, it doesn't check IGBTs, won't work on those. And it will give you an idea what the gate turn on voltage is, but it's often partly turned on and not all the way. Nonetheless, let's get started with our in-channel MOSFET testing. Here is my actual test setup. On this side over here, you'll see several high watt, low ohm resistors connected in parallel. They're going to be my load. They come out to a little over three ohms. This meter is connected to this small variable power supply. It's a switching power supply connect it to a wall wart, if you know what those are, a little DC output transformer or whatever. This allows me to adjust the uh, gate voltage on the device under test. This is the device under test. It's actually a socket with these screw terminals, and I put the test MOSFET on this heat sink or, and just plug it in. <coughs> Up here in this corner, you'll see this. This also plugs into that particular socket. And I use that for these larger MOSFETs and IGBTs that don't fit the socket. That's what the alligator clips are about. This reads current. This is the voltage in on the gate. Up here, it's sort of off the page. Measure the voltage across drain and source of the test MOSFET when it's turned on. Here's the schematic to my little switching power supply that I use to control the gate voltage. That You can get the links to that in the description and that's, on a, that's a separate subject I won't cover here. here. Alright, here's my actual test circuit. I have um, Voltage drain source that's across a drain source. That's one of them. That's one voltage I'll measure The other is VGS the voltage that I have across the gate source Here is my amp meter and it was connected to a 3.5 volt 10 amp DC supply um, Fairly straightforward item this 10K, while you could do it like this, was replaced with this. Make sure that the negative side is connected to the this side here, and the positive side goes directly to the gate circuit. All right, here is a chart of my test results. And remember, for each device, I tested five of each device. And I made out this chart. This chart is available. The link is in the description on my website. And you can download the chart and look at it for your own reference. So let's start walking through this a little bit. An IRF 640N. 
Now, when I say 200 volts, that's what the spec sheet says. The spec sheet says this is 0.15 ohms RDS on. And you can go through here, three. if I put in 3.3 volts, well, everything is turned off at 3.3 volts, with the exception of the IRFZ44N, it's rated for 55 volts, it's ultra low turn on resistance of 0 0.032, at 3.3 volts, it's turned on pretty much all the way, and it's... Um, voltage drain source is 0.19 volts and if you just keep cranking it up to 5 and 10 no difference so if you want if you want a mosfet that is exceptional to be used for your arduino or pickaxe projects particularly running at 3.3 volts get the irfz 44 in that's what you want all of the rest of these um, we're basically off or barely conducting at 3.3. Now, let's get up here to 5 volts. And some interesting things came up on this. If you look, notice the voltage here, 200, 200, 200, 400, 500, let's just look at these. You notice something that if it's a higher voltage MOSFET, if you come out here, even at 10 volts, its uh, drain source voltage is around 1.8 to as high as 4.4 volts, even at 10 volts gate voltage, and pretty much all the way turned on. <coughs> all right. Note that, that if you're using higher voltage MOSFETs, and I have not found an exception to this rule, if there is one, please let me know, Higher voltage MOSFETs will have a higher, <coughs> excuse me, internal resistance than the lower voltage MOSFETs down here. So as you look up through here from the IRFP450, all right, let's look again at the IRFP, <coughs> excuse me, 450 has an RDS of 0.4 ohms. And one thing about this particular device, it's cut all the way on at five volts. And it's uh, VDS is gonna be 1.8 volts. That's to be expected with a high voltage device. Let's, an interesting one that I have the most of is the IRF 730. There was the bag of them with the bent leads. And then there was the units in the tubes. Their spec sheets say they have one ohm resistance, RDS sat. Neither one would work at 3.3. Um, and if you cut on, and by the time you hit five volts, they're pretty well sort of half on. They're not on all the way as much as they can be until you go to 10 volts. Not a, this is not something you really want to, you don't want to use a lot of these up here really with a 3.3 uh, volts is out. 5 volts, they don't really work that great. Let's see which ones works at 5 volts pretty well. The IRFP450 works well works well it's rated for something like 500 volts at 50 amps or whatever but this device is old i salvaged these out of a circuit bo circuit board in the late 90s so it's a dated part they still sell them but they're somewhat expensive for your overall use for an arduino or pickaxe um, I would go with these down here. I would go with the IRFZ44N. That's going to be your best bet. The others down here work pretty well. They, send to be, they tend to be a little more sensitive than does the uh, higher voltage models. So you got the... So these ultra-low resistance units tend to cut on at 
by the time they're at 5 volts, they are pretty well all the way on. I did end up with one known as the NF37AB. Never could find the part number, but it tested out, of course, as an N-channel. At 3.3 volts, it was sort of half on, but it turned on all the way at 5 volts. So this is handy, a handy setup if you have a device that you don't know what it is. You'll get a clue here. So at 5 volts, I pretty well amped up my current, and the uh, VDS was only 0.19 volts. At 10 volts, it was a little, it was the same current. So this tells me a lot right here. It's an in channel. I'm guessing it's no more than 55 or 60 volts, like the other low turn on um, transit uh, MOSFETs. And it has a low RDS. So that's, so I would feel safe using this at 50 or 60 volts. Um, it is certainly not going to be a 500 volt model as you got up here. So by reading the, by using a chart like this and a comparison and reading the turn on voltages, you can get an idea even without a part number what the voltage range of the device is and what the RDS is. Finally, the same test circuit that I had for the in-channel MOSFETs works exactly the same for test testing IGBTs. All right, let's look. I only had three of them in my possession. One is an H20R1202, rated for um, 1200 volts. Now, this is from the spec sheet. It's supposed to have a turn-on voltage VCE SAT of 1.48 volts. It's rated for 20 amps. Under my test at 10 volts, I had a VCE of uh, 1.96 volts. This is the IXGH25N100A. They still make those, even though the ones I had were salvaged from circuit boards from the 1990s. It's rated at 1,000 volts. It has a VCE SAT of 3.5 volts. And it's rated at 50 amps. And again, at 10 volts, it's pretty well cut on at 3.4 amps and a VCE at 1.96 volts. Finally, I had a third device, an IXGH1539. I cannot find any data on the web. I'm guessing it's 1,000 volts. Oddly, it had a lower VCE than the two devices that I had the spec sheets on at 1.68 volts. Now, why did I test this only at 10 volts? You need to be aware right now. You cannot drive this directly with an Arduino or pickaxe or whatever. It does not cut on until around 7 or 8 volts. It will not cut on at 3. It will not cut on at 5. Do not try to use this device to drive it with an Arduino, at least the ones that I have. So this finishes testing the in-channel MOSFETs and the IGBTs. As I said before, the chart and test results are available on my website, and there'll be links to this in the description. I have a separate video on checking P-channel MOSFETs and connecting them in parallel. So thank you for watching the video. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Uh, that would be nice. Anyway, thanks for listening. Have a great day.